All right, welcome back to Off the Tap. This week is episode 71, and we're doing Guinness 0.0 non-alcoholic draft. So as a correction, it's not a 0.0. It does have 0.5% alcohol. Okay. Well, or it says 0.0 on the front of the can. No, no it, says, it says 0, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to point out, I'm, I know I brought it up last week, but like, 71 just doesn't i know it's leagues above 70 but it just doesn't have the same ring to it does it what 71 oh yeah it doesn't feel the same as 70 it's not it's not disappointing i mean it's something to be celebrated obviously but it just doesn't feel quite as good as 70 however i'm super super excited for this week's because as we mentioned along the way a lot of them a lot of the alcoholic free beers i've tasted i have not tasted this one and had no clue this was even an option until we found it uh yeah me either i had never even heard of this i had no idea that guinness had a a uh non-alcoholic um which is it's going to be interesting because the other two that we've had are more like lighter beers Mm -hmm. so it's going to be interesting to see if this one really upholds with the you know guinness standard yeah, I know. I'm actually wish that I could find like some history. We're gonna look it up as we go. Um, you know what? Actually, online it does say 0.0. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I thought because I was when I was looking at their website, it says 0.0. Um, the information and it just that says zero percent. Yes, it does. So mm-hmm. I stand corrected. You win. Alcohol-free stout. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. This I'm... this is the one that I, we went and got these what before the month started. So we've just had the stock for the month sitting Correct. in the fridge. And I believe that both you and I have been most excited to taste this one just to see. Hands down. Here's probably. Yeah. Just because it's it's I know it's a Guinness, which is like probably the world's second most or third. I don't know. It's probably top 10 most drank beers or most famous when you look at them. Um, I think I've made the comment about every time I think a guy's stopping off at the bar to grab one with their buddies, it's a Heineken or it's a Guinness. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's also, in my opinion, the easiest beer to chug. And we'll get around to that in a second as my reasoning why. Um, so here's why we've probably never seen it before. It was not available till July 2021. Mm. So well, I mean, it's still been a couple. It's still been a couple years, though. Oh, for sure. And what's even cool, too, which we'll get into in a minute, but it has the widget in it, which is what pretty is, interesting. What is the widget? Well, that uh, so the widget is, it's like a tiny little piece of plastic. Sometimes they're oblong, sometimes they're plastic balls. But during canning, they, they, they inject pressurized nitrogen um, hmm. into the brew. It trickles into the hole of the widget, and it just chills in there. Until you pop the can, the widget releases it. So all the nitrogen gets... So okay. you, if you, what, what? Yeah. So I was going to say, go ahead and pop yours because obviously I always get mine popped before the episode starts. And yeah. when it popped, there was it some steamed. steam coming out of there. So I was wondering what was going on. And that's what it was. You can, the camera's not catching it, but yeah. So I, it, it brings like, oh, there it goes. I don't know if you can see it coming out of there. But anyways, um, so if you think about it, you ever had the nitro cold brews from, uh, Oh, yeah. Have you ever had a nitro beer? I've had a nitro beer before. Oh, okay. So yeah, that that's the same thing. Like that frothy, thick headedness of it. Um, mm. Although I'm gonna be honest, I don't. Oh yeah, it's happening. It's not quite Guinness thick, but uh, it's happening. It's. I mean, it's it's pretty stout looking though. I mean, oh, it's dark for sure, but if I would have poured like an actual oh, Guinness really? like that, yeah. this whole fucking thing would be foam. The foam is is dark too, though. That's oh, I know, but yeah, I mean, it's no, no, like, I know, I know the yeah. ratio is way off. I know, I know what you're but, saying, but that's what's. Uh, it kind of smells. It doesn't smell super Guinnessy. But, it smells uh, a you... little stouty, but it definitely doesn't smell Guinnessy. I think it smells coming out of the can. It smells like normally the head of what? Why are you laughing? I, I, just, think the head I, was, of, I was trying to make like a, in my head, a, a, a comparison between Hennessy and Guinness. <laughs> but couldn't bro. think of anything, but you know. You might be onto something there. I'm just saying. 
We're going to call that a flashy boiler maker. Fancy <laughs> beer, fancy whiskey. Hey. That's a that's a Guinnessy. A Guinnessy, bro. Dude, yet again, here we go. In live format divulging all of our straight up giveaways. There's a bar somewhere that's probably listening to this going Guinnessy. Let me just write that down. That's going to be our best seller for sure. Um so it smells more Guinnessy. Trademark. Wink, wink. Out of the uh, can than it does out of the uh, the pint, and um, that's crazy because normally Guinness, like when you get it from a bar, you can smell that foam walking across the room on the tray. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it just kind of like smacks you in the face almost when it, when it goes by. Also, <laughs> real quick, I just want to call attention to the way that they describe the widget. I'm gonna read it in its entirely the way that Google gave it to me, and I want you to just be the judge of. Did they go a slightly too far in how they're describing this? Okay. The Guinness widget is a tiny plastic ball inside beer cans. During canning, pressurized nitrogen is added to the brew, which trickles into a hole in the widget. Once open, the widget's nitrogenated beer squirts into the rest of the beer, giving it a velvety texture. Do we think that was necessary? We had to get very, very sexual in that definition, huh? Dude, first off, trickling into a hole in the widget. You can snap yeah. that. Boop. Cut that out of context. And then squirts into the rest of the beer. <laughs> That's. I'm not quite sure those words are even, not let alone appropriate. I'm not even sure they're accurate. Yeah. Like, I don't even think just, that's actually what happens. No. I mean, I, I wouldn't say squirt. It's a gas going into a liquid. I don't know if that squirts. How about releases? And instead of trickles, stores itself in the hole of the widget, <laughs> finds itself. Any other terminology would have been a lot more accurate. Yeah. Well, a lot more appropriate, maybe. And accurate, yeah, I, just, I guess. I just feel like whoever wrote that also writes the descriptions on really shitty homes that are on HAR, you know, or that are on Realtor.com. They're like, cozy little, cozy little lakeside winter college, college, cottage just a fucked up tent and the poles are missing on it you're just like yeah, yeah. i guess that's kind of cozy. Yeah, one, one of the whole poles is just sticking out the side yeah. so, all right i'm gonna get in and taste it real yeah quick. yeah i'm sorry okay here we go i'm gonna see what we're about yeah yeah it's it's not not guinnessy but it's not all. It's also not Guinnessy. Yeah. Um. Mm, I think you might have brought this up before, but it. I get the impression that somebody had like. Have you ever? Have you ever had like the root? It's not bad. It's not nasty, but I, like. You ever no. had the root beer extract? You know how they have vanilla extracts and all these other things? You mm -hmm. can make root beer with root beer extract, okay? Mm -hmm. And, like, there's recipes and shit, a lot of syrup and sugar and stuff like that. This is almost like somebody had Guinness extract, but they mixed it really weak. And a glass of water. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you were only supposed to add, like, four squirts of the extract to six ounces of water but they put 20 ounces of water in there and gave it one squirt. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. also, I mean, again, I know it's not the real deal, but like the, the head is all already starting to thin out. Um, the, uh, the aftertaste is kind of there. Um, it just doesn't link. You're, you're right. When you, when it comes in, it's not nearly as thick first off. No, no, no. It liter it is exactly how you described it. It's like literally like one drop of an extract flavoring into water. Like it tastes it feels like water in your mouth. So just yeah, so it's and, and it's thinner. It doesn't coat as well as a Guinness. Um but to your point, it's it's really the middle that I don't care for. It starts yeah. halfway okay. Then the middle you're like, what is that? Water extract in Guinness? And then the end, you're like, yeah, I kind of get some burnt notes. You know what I mean? You know, I don't want to. I don't want to harp on it too hard here. Yeah, I don't either. I don't like, either. You know, I don't want to go like too hard. But you know what else it kind of tastes like to me? 
Like if you were to take a glass of water and just put maybe like three coffee beans in yes. the water. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Like not ground up, just three coffee beans. It's kind of like how it's like, it's LaCroix, right? Yes. How there's just like, you know, that someone's made that joke. I don't remember who it was. But someone's made that joke where it's like when they're adding flavor, they just kind of like breathe the flavor toward the can. Yeah, you know it's I mean? like LaCroix chipped with one lime in the truck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I get it. Yeah, that's, um, that's kind of what I'm getting from this right now. That I think that's spot on. It's almost like... Uh, yeah, I, it's almost like it. maybe they, they set the cans next to the Guinness plant and they were like, soak up the air. Yeah. That's what it was. They just put it next to one of like the vents outside and let it bask. Also crazy to me how, um, how thin, like, it's weird, because in the glass, it doesn't appear so, but it's a lot thinner than a Guinness. Oh, yeah. A lot thinner. Extremely thin. Which, which, real quick, to circle back to the beginning point, um, that, that's what I was going to mention. Like, to me, the easiest beer, I mean, obviously, I don't know if I would like to chug this, but, like, the quickest pitch, <laughs> this is I mean, probably, you could probably chug this pretty easily, honestly. Maybe so, yeah. I don't know if I would enjoy it, but the quickest pitcher that I've ever drank in my entire life, multiple times, is a Guinness. And here's why. Because it's thick, and it's like milk. And I don't know if there's anything I drink faster than milk, unless it's through a funnel. And mm. so, honestly, that's why Guinness, to me, is the most chuggable beer. Like, if somebody was like, I'm going to race you right now, and you have one beer... It's going to be Guinness in a pitcher. I'm going to let it get a little, not room temp, but a little cooler than straight out of the draft. And then I'm going to slam it. And here's the other thing that people don't realize. I think Guinness only is only like 3%. I don't know about 3. I think it's like 3.3. I mean, no we're going to Google it. Low. I mean, I'm going to look at it. We're going to Google it. But also, let's get into some of the... Uh, Let's get into some of the facts on this. Um, well, real quick, so, I want to I want to point out that the reason that I love Guinness so much, I mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I love I've loved Guinness since, you know, my beginning of my drinking days. Uh, it was like the first stout that I ever had. Right. Pretty much the first stout that anybody has. Yeah. Um, but I love it, especially whenever you mix it with some blue moon, bro, the dark side of the moon. I've never had it with. I mean, I've had a black oh, and yeah. tan where you mix it's the same it with thing. the bat. That's the same thing. No, it's, it's just it's just with blue moon instead of whatever the tan is in the other one. Bass. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same concept because they like layer on each other, which Correct. is really cool. Um. So as you tilt the glass to get a drink, you get a little bit of sip of both. Uh, just just really cool concept. I never knew that it worked like that and. I think, well, you know, I, I don't, now tasting this, I don't know if I would actually consider it, but like before we got into this, I was thinking if Blue Moon made a non alcoholic, I could get me a non alcoholic Dark Side of the Moon. So they almost um, make it, they make the light blue and it's like super light. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, I obviously it's, it's got oh. alcohol in it, but the light sky is what they call it. Blue Moon has a light sky. Yeah. I think it's like three percent. Huh. I wonder if it would be um, worth a worth a try or not. I just I don't know. I feel like honestly, because this isn't like thick like the Guinness, it really wouldn't sit correctly. What Anyways. do you mean? Oh, with the black you know, and tan. Yeah, yeah. No. I would feel like it would just mix. It's also very hard to do. I've seen people try to do it online, uh, like at home to yeah. mix the mix the beers and get them to sit like that, and everybody struggles with it. It's like an art form. Yeah, I think it's all. I mean, I you think you got to do one over the other. You got to do it at a specific like you got to pour one first, then you have to pour the other. I think there's a pace at which you do it. I also want to call something out real quick. It has nothing to do with our current conversa conversation. Then I'm going to get into nutrition facts. I've had to I have had to search everything that we've talked about thus far at least two times because I keep typing it into Bing first. I'm just We're like, back on it. Bing. That's back irrelevant. Me. And then I have to search Google and then type it into Google. So three you times gotta, I have to type this in. You got a problem. You got to set Google as your default I search know. engine, bro. 
I know. Okay, so let's talk about um dude, uh, this is crazy. I would say so uh okay. So if you think of again, I'm going to go through the nutrition facts of a Guinness, okay? And when you think of Guinness, you think heavy, right? I mean, it Well, I think up. stout. Yeah. Yeah. It's stout. Yeah, I'm not in the alcohol, but like it it is like good lord. It's a meal. Oh yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what's crazy is like if we take a standard Guinness and we like if you took a standard Guinness and you stuck it next to a Miller Lite, okay, mm-hmm. and you were like Jesus Christ, this is a meal. It's 125 calories versus 96, 10 grams of carbs versus two point I think it's eight or two point six. Um, alcohol by volume, by the way, is four point two. So I was wrong, but it's That's still, still light. lower than I think than I would think. Well. I think that's equivalent to a Miller Lite, right? So either way, all that being said, that's how Guinness, it's a lot heavier, not in alcohol, but heavier in feel and stout, stouter. <laughs> Look at me with the puns. Stouter when it comes to calories and when it comes to carbs versus a Miller Lite. However, on the non-alcoholic front, probably because it's all water, it competes with all the other ones we've had on there. Dude, calories, 60. Right? Carbs, 13.5. So no more or less than the standard non-alcoholic beer. We know they're going to come in carb-heavy. There's 1.1 grams of protein. Okay. I also Also, saw that there was zero grams of fat. Yeah, there are zero grams of fat. Uh, But there's zero grams of fat in regular Guinness as well. That's interesting, though. I wonder with the hydration level of this thing, though, because I'll tell you what, I feel like you could take this bad boy on a jog with you and you would be OK. You could. You could. Also, I just love like I know it's European. Um, not Yeah, I mean, Ireland. But what's so crazy about this is, is, dude, God forbid they'll write the ounces on there. But God forbid it be 12 or 16, like every red blooded American tall boy or regular 12 ounce can. They're like, no, no, no. We'll give you 11 point. What is it? We'll give you 11 point uh, two. You get 11 point two or you get 14 point nine. No yeah. fucking way. We're doing 12 and 16. We're European. You assholes. They're still writing ounces in the can. Like, I'd rather get it in milliliters, whatever the fucking equivalent is. I'd rather get it in milliliters. than you lie to me about your 11 point two fluid ounces or your 14 point nine. Yeah, I agree. I noticed whenever we popped this thing open that it was a little empty. Well, that and like the can. I know this sounds crazy and I've drank a lot of tall boys, but it feels just a little shorter. I think it is a little shorter. It Actually, doesn't, you know what it, I think it is? It doesn't the feel widget, like a tall boy. It feels a little shorter, but the widget itself probably takes up that additional ounce and uh, a half. Oh, yeah, probably one ounce roughly. Well, it's because yeah. it what, what lingers. It's what, what was the terminology? Squirts. No, that's because it squirts out. But what does it suck in? Uh, because it trickles, trickles nitrogen in. trickles in. Nitrogen trickles into the hole. Yeah, it trickles into the hole. So that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we weren't if we weren't filling a hole with anything, then obviously we would have the full sixteen ounces in there. But the can does feel just a little shorter. It's really weird. It does. It feels it feels even a little shorter than like a monster can. But those are sixteen yes. ounces, right? Correct. They yeah. are. Like I could just kind of tell from looking at it right now that going by the uh monsters and stuff in the in the store aisle that it's definitely smaller. Yeah. I wouldn't even have to compare them side by side. Yeah, I mean, it's brewed in the same place. I mean, I wonder, you know, obviously people are looking for options. There's been a wave of people moving towards non-alcoholic beer. So Guinness was like, you're right. We want people to drink a Guinness product no matter what. And so we're going to give them the uh, non-alcoholic. We're going to give it the old college try here. Yeah. 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 They tried. I mean, this is, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Listen, I'm not, I'm not going to run it into the ground. I'm sure it's very, very difficult to create. And I mean, dude, it's it's the equivalent of like, you know, cauliflower crust pizza. Like you can get some good ones. 
but it's not going to be the same. No, yeah. From a guy that's had a plethora of cauliflower crust pizzas, I have only had one that came close to kind of tasting like regular pizza dough. Yeah, it's it like uh like dude, I, I've had some pretty rock and sugar free cookies, but every time I eat one, I'm like, that's good, that's sugar free. sugar free. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's like going, you know, I did the keto diet for a while. It's mm-hmm. go like going into everything, and you're like, yeah, that's really good for not having carbs in it. Yeah, you know, it's a sad day when reality strikes like that, but sometimes that's just how it be, man. God, dude, Sorry. it really it really does just just taste really watered down. Yeah, I know. I almost wish that they would uh like I you know I almost wish I could take it and like concentrate it somehow. Like I feel like if they were to take what they made and just like cook it and concentrate it and then it would be better. Like take the same amount of flavor but put it in a ten ounce can. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of their their ingredients on here are one of the ingredients on here is water. That's every beer. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like nobody lists it on their website usually. Yeah. Yeah. You everybody know, does. No, I've beer, never beer seen it. Laws. I you always see like, I, I always see like barley, you know, and stuff like that. But like, I don't ever see water on the ingredients when I'm like looking, looking at beers. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's written on every beer. Should be. Oh, maybe on the cans, but I'm talking about on the website. Oh, well, I mean, they're probably, uh, it's not German purity laws, because I'm sure the Irish are awful, awful proud as well. But, uh, yeah, water is a key ingredient in everything. I think well, I mean, I water. know, I know you have to have it to start the process. I understand that. You're saying that people just don't tote it. Yeah, it's not like a. Like you know, pounded, whenever, I guess, would have been yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it, it, it's not usually listed as like an ingredient on the website. You know what I mean? They list all the things that go into it, uh, that, that go into said water. And I feel like this time they were like, here's everything we water? used, but we also use a lot of water. <laughs> what are the, what are the five ingredients? Water, barley, hops, water, and more water. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Actually, there's a little bit of yeast in there. This is like when you have that one friend, that one weirdo that puts ice cubes in their beer and uh, they go to sleep and they wake up the next day and they finish the beer. That's oh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it made me think of this. To me, it tastes like you ever <laughs> that super like just one more beer is what I'm going to call it. Super late at night, you know you probably shouldn't crack that last one, but you're winding down, and you crack it, and you set it on the... And I'm talking about, like, when you've been partying, not when you're just, you know, casually drinking. But you've been partying, and you crack that bad boy, and you knew you shouldn't have, because, like, you get about Mm. this much of the can drink, and then you're like... And you fall asleep. I'm gonna go night-night. Yeah, and in the morning you get up and you're like, hey, dude, let's get back up on top. Here are the dog. And so you hit that same can. That's what this tastes like. Like it's, but it's also not flat. more watered down. <laughs> yes. It's not flat. It just tastes like flat water. Like, not offensively, but you know what I'm saying? It's so mm-hmm. watered down that it feels flat. Yeah. It does. Yeah. That's That was my initial taste uh, profile was flat Guinness but then I didn't get enough Guinness so I couldn't just roll with that yeah I yeah it's unfortunate that we're there but back to uh, some of the let's talk a little bit about this so because you called it out right before we jumped on it's a non alcoholic draught yeah draught yeah non alcoholic draught which is pronounced how yeah, I think it was draught. Now I'm confused. No, 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 no. It's pronounced draft, okay, but we're just yeah. read. It's more like draft. Draft. Yeah. Yes, draft. But what's so crazy about this is that right as we were working into this episode, we were like draught, draft, and you didn't necessarily believe me. And here's what I discovered in trying to figure out how to pronounce it: is that when I Google words to see how they're pronounced. I, if I'm not listening to it, 
I don't know how to fucking use the tools to pronounce it. Like the way they write the letters and shit. Oh, yeah. That doesn't help me. I'm no, like, oh, okay, so there's an A with a dot and a line underneath it. What the hell does that tell me? Yeah. Oh, is that a backwards upside down E with a slash through it? What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? Yeah. So in all of my effort to discover, it's kind of like when you, you see people, I don't remember what movie it was, but there was that guy that's like reading a book, but he's also reading the dictionary at the same time because he doesn't know what any of the fucking words mean. Mm. That's kind of how it was for me whenever I was looking up how to pronounce draught. I realized I don't know how to use the tools that they gave me to pronounce it. So then I started Googling what the symbols meant. You know how hard it is to Google the symbols when you don't know how to use a keyboard to type them? Pretty freaking hard. Is, is also, that, are those letters Latin? Like, what is that? Dude, I don't know. Like, we, I should know that. I'm kind of too late in life to go back and learn, obviously. I think speech people know what that is. But also, I just want you to wrap your mind around this for a second. So I Google how to say draw, draw or draft, right? Draft. It, it gives me the things you're supposed to know how to say that tells me. I don't know what those are. I try to Google them. So I look up how to write them with a keyboard. By the way, imagine now, like I mentioned earlier, I'm doing all of this at least three times because the first time I put it into Bing. And you think Bing's going to return me a fucking response on that? It's not happening, <laughs> but it's not. In it's fact, not, I'm convinced at this point that Bing wouldn't even know how to pronounce the upside down backwards E with a slash through it. No, definitely would not know how to do that. I don't even know if Bing returns that for you. I think Bing just goes, were you trying to say this and gives you a completely different word? You know what Bing does? It auto corrects that to just taking you to the Google search engine. That's what it does. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you, you mean Google? <laughs> yes, I did, actually. How to pronounce dropped. Did you mean you needed to go to Google? <laughs> yes, That's always. That's exactly what I meant. I uh, always need to go to Google for sure. Yeah, I've always wondered, like, because you never learn those letters, like, growing up. You know what I mean? Like, I feel no. like that's like a, it's a class specific thing in like college you have to take or something because nobody knows those letters ever. A very, very small group of people, I would imagine, like people that work in that field and only that field. It's okay. You know, how doctors are like, oh, your whatever is enlarged and your whatever because of this, whatever. Like, yeah, you could take that knowledge and you could probably talk to like the layman and he would be like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. But these people explaining to you how, you know, the upside down backward E works. The only people that will ever understand that are the people with that profession. I'm convinced mm -hmm. of that. Yes. I like yeah, that. I, I think Wikipedia puts it in there. And I'm like, dude, you're wasting time. Like, we wouldn't all have to donate a dollar if y'all weren't typing that shit in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You, so you're saying Wikipedia is the one that's doing the pronunciation stuff? So they use, yeah, they, I think in parentheses after most words, I mean, you know, if they're difficult to pronounce, they have it in there. And I'm like, that is definitely a waste of space. You know so how much like wasted storage that they have because of that? The people that are typing that in aren't even getting paid for it, bro. No, but you know, you know, they're always <laughs> just... like donate $2 so we can keep this rocking and rolling. I'm like, how about you cut the staff that's keeping up with the fucking pronunciation? <laughs> yeah. We don't need that, bro. What did, put them on something else, man. Put them on something else. Um, I, I do not need pronunciations. That all I need is all I need is the the uh, vocal. I just need you to. I need to hear how it's said. I don't need to read how it's said. Oh no! I went to drought. I did not go to drought. That's Jesus like Christ! Personal Dude, you know problem. What? First, next thing I need to use Bing for is to S download Google Chrome. Okay, this is true. You should always do that, anyways. Actually, don't don't take that advice. Um, Google Chrome is not great for your CPU, but yeah, I know. I mean, I could put anything else in there. I mean, do it, it, here. I'm gonna put this in perspective. This is how this is my personal feeling. Like Bing makes Internet Explorer as an entire entity look phenomenal, in my opinion. Like, I know that they're not connected to each other. I mean, Bing's just the search engine. Obviously, Edge is what's running it or whatever the iteration is at this point. But, like, I have the same back-of-the-throat vomit feel when I say Bing that I had with Internet Explorer. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um. Okay, so there's no pronunciation on draught, but it is also spelled draft. 
It's a beer mm-hmm. served from a cask or a keg rather than from a bottle or can. Draft beer served from a pressurized keg is also known as keg beer. I think that makes a lot of sense. But there's no pronunciation on um, this wiki page, but yeah, they normally do include it. Yeah, for those usually, that can read it. so whenever I, before we started, when I looked up how to pronounce uh, draft, uh, it was just a YouTube video of a guy that was saying it, and uh, this is why I got confused about the pronunciation, because it was a very British-sounding dude, and I just feel like even if we were to pronounce it draft, he would have we- still pronounced it draft. Dude, which brings me to, I don't, I'm glad you bring that up because have you seen that video of the guy from Australia that's trying to explain the English language? (laughs) No. Oh my Lord. Like, I wish we had it rocked and ready to roll like we did the slide video, but it is absolutely hilarious because he's just explaining. He's like, but the pH, the pH makes an F sound. Yeah. But fuck all, oh, there's an F already there. Like, dude, it's just hilarious. Like, it makes no sense. He's like, but then sometimes it's the GH, right? Except, except when you add the T, it's thought. Then you cut the T. Well, fuck all, oh, then it's tough. It might, like, dude, it's just. So hilarious. Like, I, you got to go. I don't even know how to. Uh, obviously, Google has done better with worse. Okay. Yeah. But punch in Australia guy English language sounds. You don't have to do it now, but that's this week's homework. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, oh, dude. I. It's one of those clips, too, where like every single time I see it come up on the feed, I watch it in its entirety. I stop. I watch it in its mm-hmm. entirety. And I have the same volume of laughter and just each time. Oh, it just floods over me. It's ridiculous. Man, I always love those videos. I can't believe I haven't seen that. I feel like I might have and maybe in like passing. But dude, he's he's like driving in a car or something like I mean, he's like in his vehicle doing it. But it's just so convincing because you like as he's explaining it to him to you, you're like. This dude's making a lot of sense. The whole thing makes no sense, but he's making a lot of sense. And also, you can tell how in his brain, he's like, it really, like, this frustrates the shit out of me. And I know their language, you know, Australian is the same as ours, but it's just so hilarious that it's just crazy. The the English language is horrible. I hate this. Like, we got got so many things that, so many words that are spelt the same that mean different things, right? Different, there's words that sound the same that are different. Like it, I don't know for sure, obviously, because I've grown up on English, but everybody says that it's the hardest language to learn. You know, it just sounds like it's one of those things that would change over time. The way you phrase that, it's like, bro, I've been in these English streets. That's how I grew up kind of thing. Also, (laughs) you're 100 percent accurate. Uh, It's funny. It's like I before E except for. And then have you seen them write the sentence with all the words that are not? Dude, no. it's and it's like huge. It's like I before E, except for like you know, exception rather than the rule. Maybe there's like three words, okay? I before E, except for these three words. No, it's like thirty or forty or maybe even fifty. Ridiculous. Jesus so I before Christ. E is honestly just as much the exception as it is the rule, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, I've never seen that. I honestly only thought there was like a handful of words, so. Yeah, everybody's like, I before E, except for neighbor way and Pete. Quite sure where pieces is on that. But anyway, nonetheless, weird. That's how that's how the sentence is written. It's like I before E, and then it says this very, very, very long sentence. And then it says, isn't that weird? Huh? Which also uh, doesn't follow that rule. Yeah. You know what else is weird, by the way? What? Nicknames. Oh, yeah. The fact that we just make that shit up and the rest of the world knows it forevermore. Yeah. And, your and, take. Is that why it's weird? And Yeah. And the fact that some people are given this nickname, right, at like a really young age and it just passes along until you get to people that don't know the reason or the origin of the nickname, yet they still call you by the nickname. The I agreed. Also, I want your opinion. Like, I don't think 
you can ever like I don't think you people set out it's very rare I would say this is this is the exception that somebody's like I'm gonna nickname this guy and then they say it and it sticks that's no. not ever how it works no, no 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 a nickname never sticks that way ever no it's just an organic weird thing that humans as an entirety because i guarantee you again i'm not making fun of anything but like those tribes and stuff that speak with clicks i bet you they have nicknames for folks too mm -hmm. it's just a natural human thing to oh, be yeah, like yeah. oh he walks with a limp like oh stubby or, or limpy or whatever it is right yeah. like and then and you do it because you're just like you can't think of their name maybe and you say it and then the rest of the world's like forevermore our whole society our whole tribe our whole world will call this guy walks with a limp. Yeah, it's never, if you go into it with the idea of, I'm going to set this nickname. Or, you know what's even weirder? If you try to set your own nickname, right? Yeah, well, that's that's unacceptable. Almost that's... as unacceptable as the volume of water that's in this Guinness. But <laughs> yeah. keep going. That's kind of like, that's kind of like social suicide if you try to set your own nickname. Like, you could be the most loved person or like the most popular person at school and if you came in and in third person tried to set your own nickname people would look at you and be like you're immediately at the bottom of the pole now i don't even think it's acceptable for you to bring it up like when somebody asks you like i don't think it's socially acceptable like if i were to walk up to you i don't know you or whatever i walk up to you in a group of people and i'm like hey what's your name you even if you've gone by something else your entire life should, should say, say your real socially name. yeah i'm randall and then you yeah. wait for 5 minutes later for somebody to go hey porky what's up or whatever yeah. right and then you're like whoa wait a second why is why did he just call you Porky? And then it's okay for you to be like, ah, shit, like, that's my nickname. But yeah, I you don't bring it up. You don't set the stage with something like that. Hey, man, what's going on? Uh, uh, nice to meet you. What's your name? Oh, my name's Porky. Just, I, I just can't. Why? Yeah. Why would you do that? First of all, why would you do that to yourself, right? Like, if that was your nickname, if that was my nickname, I would not want to i mean obviously this is just an example but if that was my nickname i'd be like yeah i don't think i'm gonna lead with that in any conversation ever dude imagine going more... out on a imagine going out on a date to meet somebody and doing that even that's even weirder doing what introducing yourself with your nickname oh yeah unless unless your nickname is like uh one of those weird nicknames uh i mean a, a lot of nicknames are weird no, 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 not a weird name. Like, no, it's like a normal one. Like, we we used to have this guy when I was in college, and we called him Pete. I don't, his, that was not his first name. Like, his name was like Jared or something like that. But his nickname still was weird. Pete. Yeah, it's still weird. But like, if you if you were to throw that out, like, oh hey, I'm Pete. Nice to meet you. Nobody would even question if that's a nickname. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's also like. I can feel like that could be identity fraud also, though. So you're saying even that's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. I think just use your normal name, man. And then if it comes up, you know, but that would be hard to explain, right? Like, imagine in this case, you are on a date, right? And you're like, hey, my name's Jared, right? My name's Jared, whatever. You're meeting for the first time. I'm Jared. And then one of your buddies walks by, right? Like, just don't know they're out or whatever. They walk by and they go, yo, Pete, what's up? And then you have to look at your date and explain, listen, I have a nickname that's also a normal name. Yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to lie about my identity. You know so, what I mean? So, so that for the sake of putting yourself in trouble, you would you would lead with your own first name? I would. Okay. I mean, because then at least I could show my driver's license and prove it, you know what I mean? Dude, also one more piece of homework. Have you ever seen the bit that Cedric the Entertainer does about nicknames? No. Oh my lord. He goes, he went to a family reunion. I, this is the gist of it. I'm not it's not a spoiler alert, I guess if you're going to go look at it, obviously he's going to make it funnier. But he said he went to a family reunion and he went up to this guy and they were there the whole weekend. Like they were on a boys trip or something like that, and he went up to this guy and he was like, "Hey, what's your name?" And he was like, uh, you know, he was like one of those older guys, and he kind of mumbled when he talked. And he was like, "My name's uh, my name's Charlie Jones, but you could probably call, people call me by my initials." And he was like, 
uh, okay, that seems like a real weird nickname, but that's fine. He goes, so for the next two or three days, I would say, hey, Bominicious, come on, man. What, you coming with us? Hey, Bominicious, that was real nice. Like, Bominicious, you made these ribs? That was awesome. He goes, after about two or three days into it, people heard me saying that, and they were like, what are you calling him? And he was like, Bominicious, Bominicious, that's his name. That, that's what he told me to call him. And he's like, no, 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 his name is CJ. Call me by my initials, CJ. Dude, it is absolutely hilarious. No the way. way. That he put the, because again, Cedric the Entertainer, obviously very rapid speed. Dude, it is absolutely amazing. By my initials. Ba- he goes, by yeah. my initials. By my initials. People call me by my, my name is Charles Jones, but they call me by my initials. Oh my God. Dude, and I was like, that is something that embarrassingly I probably would have done by oh, accident. Yeah. But I would... I would charge you. That's still less embarrassing than introducing yourself with your nickname. Yeah, right? I agree. I agree, hundred percent. I get. I would get secondhand <clears throat> embarrassment from somebody introducing himself. Like if I was with my homie and he was like introducing himself to somebody, and he said his nickname, I'd be like, ah, "Come, can we leave? You know what yeah. I mean?" I'd be like, "Hey, man, I got to get out of here. You know, it's been nice knowing you." I don't think we should talk for a little while, at least. Uh, maybe it's, not ever again, honestly. It's also just crazy to me how, like, you're, you're given a name. And, like, I know some names are harder than others, but, like, you're given a name and a true nick for, for you to be given a true nickname that, like, the world, for all intents, agrees is now your name. And nobody questions that. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's a weird concept. It is. <clears throat> it is very weird. Like I have I a nick, I I mean I have a nickname, but it it's you know, I, I'm not I'm not gonna It'll go be out weird here to say and, it now because you're gonna introduce yourself as it. Really yeah, like, mm, I don't know. and also it's just not a nickname that I want the public to call me. You know what I mean? Oh, I I'd like it's it's that. just like the homies. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like a like an inside joke kind of thing. So <laughs> I I don't really care for other people to know it, but you know I guess well, I guess some people just really like their nicknames. It is what it is, you know. I, I always felt left out in our family because, um, you yeah. know, our our grandfather gave all of the grandchildren nicknames, or at least most of them, and I was one of the ones that never got one. So, but to be fair, I was like number what thirteen mm. down there a ways. A good so, day. so you know, I was one of the one of the younger ones, and it's at a certain point you can only have so many. Uh, movements that the human body does that you can nickname a child after yeah and again those were all straight up out of um and i don't know if necessarily everybody used those but he was very religious in using them to the point where like i think in his brain he knew i mean he obviously knew our names but in his brain when he looked at a face that's the first thing that would come to mind oh yeah it wasn't even like even when he would ask me like how other people, you know, how our cousins were doing or like how you were doing, he would yeah. refer to said people with their nicknames. And I would have to kind of like backtrack in my head and remember yeah. who was who. I'd be like, wait Carry a second. One, uh, yeah. Right. I'm like, can we just use regular names, Gramps? Come on. One time for me. One time uh, for the one time. And it, what's crazy, too, is, like, it wasn't something that I always just assumed. I guess at, at a younger age, I didn't pay attention. But, like, I just always assumed at some point when I was, like, in my teens that, like, it would go away. But I would say from, like, when I remember him ever calling me anything as a small child up until, like, my 30s, he still used it. Like, no matter what. Oh, on yeah. The phone on um in person whenever the case was like it never faded or went away nope and it never lost the nostalgia either said it the same way all the time here's the other thing that's crazy too is that like if we were in a big group like if we were all together in a group like you know how sometimes because he's the only person really that ever called me that Mm -hmm. and so what's crazy is is even in a group if he said somebody like if we were all sitting around a table and he used a nickname for somebody immediately without even thinking, I would be like, oh, that's for me. Or I'd be like, oh, f- point to who it was like, oh, yeah. dude, he's calling you. And uh-huh. 
whereas it would be only in those isolated moments, but it was just like so ingrained in that environment that like, this is what you are. And everybody had these names that like, even we didn't even second guess it, like not second guess it, but like we didn't even have our brain just automatically computed it. Yeah. But you weren't going around introducing yourself to people as no, no, no. said nickname. No, 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 I was not. No, because that would have been weird because you yeah. would have then had to sit there and explain the story of which, I mean, you were a baby, really, when the nickname was given to you. So, correct. you know, that's just not and something I'll... we want to do. That's just not an icebreaker, bro. It's not an icebreaker. Just use your name. Keep your nicknames to themselves. There's a reason they're so unique and they're so odd and the concept of them is crazy. Like the mm. world's going to do then your community, your family, whatever your friends, they're going to do whatever they do. It's just something you got to let naturally happen. And mm. also too, like, you know, it's a sign of affection. I think it's like a, it's a good thing to have a nickname, but like just because you don't have one doesn't mean anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Also, very weird for a nickname to be longer than your name. Like, syllable-wise, or, you know, like, saying-wise, I guess. Uh, like, like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, the nickname that people use for me is longer than my name, syllable-wise. And yeah. I just think that's weird. But I just feel like your nickname should be easier to say than your regular name. Or at least the same. You know what I mean? Or built off of the way, you know, that you walk, you talk, something you said one time. Mm, that's um, usually where it comes from. Yeah, something or where you're from. Once. Or, um, you know. A lot of, a lot of parameters here. A lot of, circumstances. Lot of yeah. They're just weird, speaking, though. Speaking of friends, family, um, how close are we? Where, where, where are we at on time? Are we, how close are we to, uh. We got a little, we, we got a few minutes here. Okay, so one thing I wanted to bring up, because, again, speaking of friends, thinking of family, thinking of uh, people that you interact with, whether they've bestowed a nickname upon you or not. Sometimes it might be lucky to get out from underneath the nickname, too, by the way. You know what I mean? Mm, Sometimes yeah. people will, like, leave, you know, they like, go off to college or they get a job in a different town. They're like, ah, oh, thank God I get to leave loose lips behind you know, or whatever the, you know, yeah, like they sink ships, right? You're a liar, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they can't call you, your nickname can't be liar. Anyways, I was, I was um, thinking of something else, but that's, that works too. Push it to the limit. <laughs> limit. Right there. Anyways. Um, so my question is, and cause I'm interested to know is where do you pod? And the, and the play on this is with your partners, <laughs> with your partners. With you partners? So where where you put where do you pod? Where do you think most people pod? And where do you pod? And by that I mean listen to podcasts, potentially yeah. with you partners. Yeah. So obviously I well I mean I guess not obviously because there's some people in my situation that do drive, but I don't drive myself very often at, or at all. And when I am in a vehicle, I'm usually with one of my parents. So I don't really podcast in the vehicle, but I would if I could drive. That would be perfect pod time, right? So why don't, I mean, do you think they just wouldn't be cool with that? <laughs> well, like tunes? you know, anybody that might be listening that somehow knows my dad knows that he would never, never get in on time? that. No, 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 okay. never. Not a single time. Okay, so I Unless guess I Unless maybe it was Jimmy Buffett <laughs> or like. Eddie Van Halen or someone talking about that stuff, but then he would still want to hear music. So the Ted Nugent podcast. But yeah. the the other thing I was gonna ask. So do you don't ever earbud? Do you? You don't like your. Oh yeah, I do. So that's what I was gonna say. Is now because of you know given situations and whatnot. <laughs> usually, whenever I pod, it is behind my computer with the earbuds on. Either, either like playing a game or just doing work on the, so, uh, you know, for school or whatever. Let me kind of ask the question slightly different. Well, not slight, like, okay, you know, there's certain things you can't do when you're potting because I say this, like I can't multitask. I, <clears throat> yeah, I, so you, you lose some of the pod, right? Yeah. You don't, you don't get to pay full attention, but it just depends on what kind of podcast you're doing too. Right? Like if it's just like a comedy podcast, you know, 
like yeah. uh like can like Theo Vaughn or or Crystalia or you know those guys then yeah. you know you know it's not really like important to listen to other than for the laughter so like you know if you're listening to something that's made to like better yourself or you know maybe like a like a murder mystery type thing then you want to be more engaged in that so maybe you're you know doing it while like you're working out or something i don't know i've done that before too yeah so i don't want to get too like a couple of points i want to make like i don't want to get too philosophical <laughs> here but like pretty compelling argument for the success of a podcast like theo or um uh chris and obviously there's the rogan fans out there mm. well actually we're gonna put that in a different category but anyways it's crazy how like you can kind of half-ass be chimed in and sometimes you follow a story and you're like oh this is an awesome story but then also you can be doing something else and you catch a tidbit and you're like what the <laughs> And yeah. then you just chuckle, right? I think it's yeah. pretty like that's a, a compelling argument for like how um like what makes it successful, I guess. But back to your point, I guess it's the type of podcast you're listening to. I don't always listen to Theo, I don't always listen to Dalia, I don't obviously always listen to Rogan. It's just random luck of the draw. But there are a few things that I'm fairly religious to. Um, if I'm flying and I'm not working on like if I've just said I'm not gonna work on the plane, then I will listen to murder mystery stuff. But the problem is I will find myself sitting there and I will be listening to um, it, like morbid is the one that I listen to and I'll be listening to morbid. And I swear to God, I will look up and I will read like three lines of the safety placard, you know, that's mounted in the seat back pocket. Yeah. And I, I will read that. And then I'm like, fuck, I just forgot the last 25 minutes of this episode. <laughs> and then I got to start over. And that infuriates yeah. me because then as I hear it back through, I'm like, wait, I think I've heard this. Oh, no, no. Wait, maybe I have for like 25 minutes until I get back to the point where I ended off. I don't remember any of it, but I remember enough of it to be like, damn it, I'm hearing this again. You know? Right. Um, But I would say primarily the bulk of mine is when I'm flying, if I've decided I'm not going to work or if I and what you know i'll walk the dog sometimes or early in the morning i'll do that and i'll put it on during that but that's a good one that not that a, not a driver the... not a podcast driver so i w this is the only thing i do um so but i always want it in airpods like i don't just podcast like through just willy-nilly just free to the world no not on speakerphone not through alexa not through anything else not through anything else <laughs> um I always want it to be in my earbuds. The only time I will do it via the truck is if I put my foot down and I was like, I'm not working on the plane and I have, I'm listening on the plane. And when I get done and I walk into my truck and I get in my truck, I'll let it transfer over and I'll finish as much as I can on the drive home because it's just kind of a continuation of yeah. what I already started. But other than that, I don't like if I when I leave in the morning, like I'm not going to just put it on to put it on. Like I'm just going to listen to whatever's on the radio. I still enjoy radio shows, which is a whole other thing. But um, well, it's a live podcast, basically. Yeah, it's basically a live podcast, right? With some interactions. And I don't even really mind the interactions. I think some of the stupid games they come up with is absolutely hilarious. Like if you really want to see how creative can people people can be of making something out of nothing. I charge you one last piece of homework. Go and listen to a local radio show wherever you're from and see how they can create excitement and they can create buy-in out of idiots trying to stop a timer by when they answer their call or whatever the fuck it is. Like, it's mind-blowing how creative they can get still to this day. And so it is kind of like a live-action um, podcast. It's the OG. But um, so that's how I pod. In-ear primarily on flights uh, when I'm not being productive and uh, I'll continue in the truck. You know what? I never got to try, but it maybe not might not be a great idea, but doesn't sound like a bad idea right now is doing your chores, man. Like mowing the lawn, weed eating, you know, clean you know, it up. That, that seems like a somewhat <laughs> decent time to pod. I've never done, um, I've never done podcasts, but I've done audio books when I cut the grass, mm. but I've never done podcasts. 
audiobooks are a totally different thing for me, man. I don't think we have time to get in on that one, but yeah, we'll save it for next week. Yeah, it's a totally different mindset for me. But uh, we do need to get in the WWYBDs here. You want me to go first, or you want to go first? How hot um, and heavy are you feeling about this one? Uh, you can go first. All right. So I, again. I know I've said this before, kind of a little bit. My WWYBD, I kind of have two because of the first one's cheating. My first one is probably not drinking it again. That's what I would be doing. Um, but if I had to actually come up with one, I don't know why this makes why this stuck out to me. But it is that first fall weather, okay? First fall weather near a fake man-made river. I don't know why, like where there's just like. Fucking, it's poured out of concrete, and there's, like, sidewalks near it, and I'm going to have a pint of this, and it's just starting to chill out, chill out, and I'm going to walk down this fake pathway. Yeah, mine was somewhat similar, not not necessarily a man-made creek or river or whatever, but uh, I was just, for some reason, thinking, like, first of all, this is the last resort thing, like, this Man. is... You know, I'm opening the fridge and there's like someone left me one of these because I'm I don't think I'm gonna buy it again. Someone like left one of these over during sober September, you know, and I like wake up in the morning, still kind of dewy outside, you know. Grab this thing reluctantly and I'm walking on the sidewalk, drinking this thing down. That's all I got. Yeah, I just I I don't know if. Uh... I tell you what, if sober September meant that I could only have these, then I just would not indulge in any fake alcoholic beverage at all. Yeah. To be honest with you. I, I, mean, we were, I was so excited for this one. I was too. And I think that's what it is. Like, they, dude, they're not so terrible. I mean, obviously, I, I'm, I'm going to try to put the second one down. Like, they're not so terrible, but like pretty disappointing considering what what we have discovered other brands are capable of yeah. and getting close. So which I, this is a great segue. I'm glad you brought that up. Great segue. Cause we're about to get into ratings. So I have to ask you a question. Obviously we're like three deep on this already, but we do have one more week, right? Yes. We have one yeah. more week. We're like three deep on this, but we've got one more week. Should we be, are we rating it against other non-alcoholic beers or are we rating it against its alcoholic brother? I, I'm trying to rate it to its uh, alcoholic brother. Okay, that's fine. I just want to be on the same page. I think yeah. that's inherently what I've been doing, but I am. I've been. I, I uh, keep saying versus other non-alcoholic beers, which obviously you can't rate a Guinness versus a. Yeah. Heineken no. I mean, but also kind of again, it's kind of like both, right? Because obviously, it's not going to be able to with you know uphold the standard of the regular beer usually right well, now we're split what's the saying now we're splitting both sides of the hair now but i but mostly i'm comparing it to the alcoholic brother and then kind okay. of like you know so I, is it I gonna think, be better than the other one or not i think i've been doing that with all of them that's so what i'm, I'm gonna doing. Yeah. i'm gonna stay true to that but also like i would say that again not being super harsh of guinness but like of this non a Guinness or non alcoholic Guinness, but like I don't think there's a non alcoholic attribute that this still wins with. No, does that make sense? I think like so. if all my alcoholic brain, it does. beers, you see what I'm saying? If all alcoholic beers tasted the same and we were rating this version, there's not a single category this one would win in. It no. sounds really harsh, but it's kind of true. No, yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, let's ah. get into what? No, I was going to say there's one category where it gets kind of close, but we'll wait for ratings. Yeah, well, I'm going to get into the rating here. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start this one. Uh, for entry, I have a two. Uh, almost could have been a one, but we'll give, it, give her a two. Aftertaste, like I said, the aftertaste kind of gives you a little bit of a, of a stout feel, so I gave it a three, a little bit of a bump up. Um, body, I got this thing at a one. I... Dude. Don't think that uh, it, it's just really watery, man. It just literally tastes like somebody put 12 ice cubes in a half a glass of Guinness. And this was the result. Um, color, I have it a four. I think it's pretty solid. 
Uh, obviously, it's going to be very difficult to get it, you know, legit to match the yeah. Guinness exactly, but it's uh, it's pretty dang close. Uh, so I'll give them that. Bitterness, I have a one. It's not. I mean, it, it's it's supposed to you know be like a stout, and it's just it's not. Um, acidity, I have a two. The only reason that that's not a one is because I feel like there's not a lot of acidity in Guinness to begin with. So it's, uh, you know, somewhat accurate, but it's still just like, it's just water, man. I just, I just mm. keep going back to water. And then fizz, I have it a one. Uh, I didn't get anything from it. No burps. Um, I actually think I had one burp, but I'm pretty sure that was from, uh, dinner earlier. So, and listen, I'm hydrated as hell though. I'm ready to go for a for a 5k you know what i mean that's where they should serve these things is that you know how they give you like beers or whatever after a 5k just serve them these yeah. things bro they get all hydrated so uh that brings my total to a 14 so real quick i got three comments to make one i think a good analogy is it's like somebody rinsed a guinness <clears throat> pint out this is what's left like they rinsed it out and then dumped that into a cup yeah <laughs> that's what i get here yeah um Number two, um, glad that it, it does feel hydrating. Um, but like I basically I would rather hydrate with anything else because like I'll mm. obviously all I got here is like bad breath water. Yeah. OK. Um, and then the last thing I was going to mention is we were like dead on until you got to fizz. We swapped two, but dead on in number. Mm. So. I almost, this is the only beer I've ever said this for, I think, but I almost wish we had a, the only thing that would have raised this score was a middle rating or lowered this score was a middle rating because we have entry. I also have it at two. I'm immediately yeah. disappointed off the bat. And then aftertaste, I have a three because it does get better. You get a little bit of that stoutiness. But if we had a score for what the in the middle tastes like, negative, I'd give it fucking negative. <laughs> yeah. okay? So it would it would negate those entries and aftertaste. But two, I mean, entry, I have a two. Aftertaste, I have a three. Body, I also have a one. Because although it appears to have beautiful color, which brings me to the next point, I got a four for color. Beautiful color, none of that. In fact, I'm surprised they can achieve this color and it still have the exact consistency of yeah, water. It doesn't dude, even make yeah, sense it to me. It doesn't make, it makes, physics makes no sense. Yeah. So bitterness, so here's where we flopped. Bitterness, I have it a two. Because, I mean, it's got a little bit... Um, but it doesn't have what I would consider to be middle of the road, which would be matching a Guinness. Acidity, I have it a one, because I, I think it's non-existent at best. Um, and again, if I'm comparing to a Guinness, like to a real Guinness, then a three is just the same amount or just enough. Fizz, I do have it a two, only because I didn't take just burps into consideration, because I never do that. Um, it does have some bubbliness to it. it. You can swish it a little bit, and it appears to have the false sense of a head for yeah. sure. It's not very reassuring. So my total comes to a fifteen. Yeah, it does. It does get give a you know pour a nice head there. Uh, that's true. But I fizz. I go with with burps mostly. And you, the the actual bubbliness of the beer itself, which a stout really isn't that bubbly, anyways, ever. No. But th dude, this is this is blow. Like, I mean, it's not like that one. That, what was at the uh, end of the woods? It wasn't oh, yeah. that. It wasn't like that mind blowing. But like, I look at this and go, how can it be that thin and not have any mouthfeel? If it's that color. I. Yeah, I, my mind is blown. Um, one last point. Uh, sorry, one last point I want to leave you with. Um, should we? Obviously not for the remainder of this month, but I think at some point I'm going to throw this out there. Should we blind taste and blind rate, lock them in, and then have all of our discussion? I always lock mine in right off the bat. I don't know when, when you fill yours in. But what I always mean? lock mine in. Like, I just, I kind of want to test the, are, are we... Um, influencing each other? Influencing each other. Because I always put mine in after the first taste. I put them in oh, immediately. Yeah. I put these in at about 
minute eight of the pot or whenever we right whenever i tasted it pretty much okay so we're putting it in about the same time yeah yeah all right well we have gotten to that point in the podcast where i'm gonna tell you to go follow us on social media on twitter and tiktok at off the tap pod and on instagram facebook and youtube at off the tap podcast we've assigned a lot of homework this week get that done the one last assignment that you have avoid getting a zero at all costs